prepare for their clash with Preston, manager Tony Pulis has spoken out against the playoff system. Pulis criticised the two-leg semi-final, saying a one-off match on a neutral ground would be better for both players and supporters after a gruelling season. Well, Tony Pulis took his team to Aston Villa's training ground for some final preparation ahead of Sunday's match. The team news at the moment is that Barry Ashby is definitely out as he completes a two-match suspension, though Mark Patterson will play despite needing a hernia operation. The Jules fans, some 3,000 of them, would have made the trip south with confidence ahead of Wednesday night's second leg at Priestfield. There was early tension in the game as Preston kicked and scratched the way through the early stages and Sean Gregan out to prove a point to Andy Hessenthaler. One of the Jules' best chances of the first half came from that Adrian Pennock effort and Preston were keen to take the lead before the break and Gregan's effort the first real test for Vince Bartram. Carlos Saba was kept at bay for most of the game, at least until he was given some space to let rip. Just 15 minutes into the second half and Preston surged ahead. David Ayer's header towering above Bartram and it was left for the Jills to mount a fight back. The home side almost went two up but Bartram getting in the way. And this opportunity was a preview of what was to come from the visitors who were eager to get a lifeline. But just before the end of the match, Bob Taylor made sure that the Jill's hopes were kept very much alive with this vital equaliser. The fans now looking forward to Wednesday. I think uh, obviously the away goal is important, but um, you know, it's, it's half time. Um, you know, we've got a tough game on Wednesday now. They're going to come and they're going to make it hard for us. Uh, they're a good side, so you know, it's a tough game for us. But uh, you know, we uh, we um, we know we've got to go back to our place and, and perform again to uh, to get through. But uh, it's going to be very tough. The biting and the kicking, and it was a hard game. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's it's, it's uh, two cup finals, and um, you know we enjoyed the battle. They enjoyed the battle. So uh, bring on Wednesday. How close are you to Wembley now? I mean, do you feel now at Priestfield you're going to do it? Um, obviously, we, we've been at home, you know, people say we've got the advantage, but uh, that's not the case as far as I'm concerned. You know, it, it doesn't really matter. You know, obviously, we've got, we've got the home support and uh, it's going to be a lot of noise there. But uh, as I say, they've had a good season, we've had a good season. Uh, we need a little bit of luck as well on the night and uh, who knows. But um, as I say, um, we're not taking anything for granted. We've got uh, another hard game on Wednesday and uh, we're really looking forward to it. Carried away with this, you know, it's a terrific... Uh, performance today but that's only 90, uh, 45 minutes if you're looking at it as a game um, and we've just got to make sure that uh, you know we keep um, keep our feet on the ground and work as hard as what we did today. We all know it's down to one game and uh, I mean really this competition I think or the competition the playoffs should probably be a one one game probably a neutral ground. Gillingham will probably go away feeling that they have now have the advantage going back to Gillingham with a one each draw and uh, we are going to have to go there and it's going to be very tough. Quite simply, the most important match in the 106-year history of Gillingham Football Club. They've never played in the top two divisions, never played at Wembley. Well, tonight, they can change all that. A win would guarantee a place in the playoff final. A draw might do, depending on away goals. 10,000 fans are packed into Priestfield on a warm summer's evening when the temperature will be turned right up. This might be the moment those fans have been waiting for, but the next 90 minutes are sure to be the most nerve-wracking they've known. Gillingham have the slender advantage of Robert Taylor's away goal, but all three games against Preston this season have ended in one-all draws. The same scoreline tonight will make the game into extra time and possibly penalties. Gillingham make just one change from the first leg. Barry Ashby has completed a two-match suspension and replaces the unlucky Darren Carr at centre-back. 23-goal top scorer Carla Saba has shrugged off a niggling groin problem to take his place in attack alongside Bob Taylor. Preston have suffered a big blow with the loss of their top scorer, Kurt Nogan. He too has a groin injury but hasn't recovered fully, so takes his place on the bench. Watch out for Sean Gregan in midfield. His battle with Andy Hessenthaler could have a big bearing on the outcome of this match. What an atmosphere here inside Priestfield Stadium. They've never witnessed a night quite like this. Gillingham kicking from right to left in the first half. And they win an early throw. 
Nicky Southall will take. Bob Taylor goes up for it, but loses out to Sean Gregan. You'd expect both sides to be fairly tense, fairly nervous. So much riding on this game. Just to emphasise, any draw will take this into extra time, then away goals will count. And if the aggregate scoreline is still the same after that, then we have penalties. Here's Nicky Southall. Looks again for Bob Taylor, score in the first leg. Andy Hessenthaler. Gillingham's first foray forward. Nice touch by Carlos Saba. Andy Hessenthaler and Gillingham have scored. What a dramatic start. And Andy Hessenthaler has put the Jills in front after just two minutes here. Priestfield goes wild. And well they might because they've taken the lead. Well, we've had fireworks of all sorts here. What a touch by Carla Saba. And little Andy Hessendahl didn't connect that well to it, but David Lucas couldn't get down. And that is the perfect start for Gillingham. Andy Hessendahl now. A good little dink into the box. Sean Gregan half clears it. Pulled down by Carla Saba. Neat shot as well. Well, he is prepared to try things, and sometimes they come off. Nicely brought down by Asaba, and the overhead kick. Straight at David Lucas, but worth a shout. Bob Taylor does well. Guy Butters just wafts it forward again. Trying to get Asaba in behind. And they want to throw it. Guy Butters gets into the middle, Bob Taylor's up, couldn't direct his header goalwards, it was just over the top, and David Lucas watched it fly over, but Bob Taylor, that's the closest he's come so far. Guy Butters whipped it in, and Taylor got in front of Colin Murdoch, couldn't quite get the header down. to Mark Patterson, they've got men coming forward here. Referee says play on, Hessenthaler will hit this one from distance, not a bad try again. Given a lot of space here Andy Hessenthaler and with the confidence of the first goal thought he'd try for a second, just over. Big pull forward again from Guy Butters. Bob Taylor now has some space, tries one audacious effort, which wasn't a million miles over, took a deflection, it goes for a corner. High on confidence, Bob Taylor, obviously. That was about 35 yards out, possibly more. And David Lucas on the Preston goal was confident. Another corner for Gillingham. Again, the big men are forward. Hesson Tyler will take. And it's come out. Southall will strike this from distance. It's wide. Didn't quite get hold of it, Nicky Southall, but that's twice now he's had those sort of chances. Never quite got hold of it, and the ball was always going wide. Big ball forward. Rankins just shrugged off Pennock. Real chance here for Preston. Guy Butters has got back, and in the end, Pennock redeems himself, but he misread that big high ball, let it bounce over his head, and for a minute there, Rankin was in with a chance. First real danger sign, that for Gillingham. 
Lee Cartwright works some space for himself and wins the corner. Well, this game swings one way and then the other. And right now, it's the Preston fans who are making the noise. They sense something may be about to happen. David Ayres goes across to take this corner kick. Ayres takes it, left-footed. Saba got up that time. And now Sean Gregan, the Preston captain, who's being booed by the Gillingham fans. He has got a lot to say for himself at times. Good player, though. said that for all Preston's pressure really they have never got in behind Gillingham never caused any real worrying moments and it's Taylor he can keep that ball in he can't there's the half-time whistle and if things stay as they are, then Gillingham are heading to Wembley for the first time in their history. The Gillingham fans sing because they know there's only 45 minutes left to hold on. They lead by one goal to nil, the lead given to them by their captain, that man number eight, Andy Hessenthaler, in the very first minute, half-time here at Priestfield. It's Gillingham one, Preston nil. 45 minutes from Wembley, Gillingham Football Club has never been so close. Here's Adrian Pennett. Well, the Preston fans in good voice now. They have 45 minutes on their side to get back into this game while the season comes to nothing. Here's Macken inside for Appleton. Bit of space for him. Nice little touch inside. Patterson just gets back. And that was a real chance for Dominic Ludden. And Patterson couldn't quite get back to him. And he came forward really well from his left back berth. And that was just about the closest Preston have gone. Just got in behind Patterson. The shot was always going across goal. Well, you sense that Gillingham will never come closer to Wembley. Preston are more fired up in this second half, and Ludden, who's been impressive on this left-hand side, is tackled well by Mike Patterson. They've won a corner, though. Well played, Mike Patterson. Just takes one moment, one lapse of concentration, and the dream is gone. Corner swung in, they all get up. Guy Butters did really well there. Vince Bartram comes to punch, Sean Gregan picks it up. And Preston again, just dink it in there. The header is over the top from Michael Jackson. He climbed really high to get that. And in the end, couldn't direct his header. Cross swung in again, and Vince Bartram was not well positioned that Michael Jackson couldn't direct his header and it's gone wide. Well, some more testing moments for Gillingham, but still no serious saves for Vince Bartram to make. That's got to encourage Gillingham. They were the favourites to go through after the first leg. Salva did really well there, but the ball wouldn't fall for him. Ludden again, always keen to come forward down this left-hand side whenever he can. And Preston just forced to go backwards. Finding it hard to get in behind Gillingham down the flank. So did just once through Ludden and they came close. That's the key for them. Getting in behind the Gillingham fullbacks. This man has that task, Ludden. 
Nice touch by Jonathan Macken, creates some space for himself. He might shoot from here, he does. It's a good strike and a good save by Vince Bartram. The shot was low, Bartram got down well and palmed it away for a corner. Created space for himself, Jonathan Macken. Good shot back across goal and Bartram did well. Nogan's touch was loose, and Gillingham can come away. Masaba again, done plenty of good work for them tonight. Now Mark Patterson, not many options for him, so he goes for it himself. But he's closed down pretty quickly. Now David Ayres can turn and run for Preston. Lee touched by him to Lee Cartwright. Cuts inside, won't get a chance to shoot though because A.D. Pennock was quick to clear the danger. And now a chance for Gillingham to break, great touch by Bob Taylor, Asaba's pace may get him in, it still might, Carl Asaba, well, David Lucas, the referee adjudged, did pretty well. Asaba went down, Preston defender Colin Murdoch's down as well, the play continues, and eventually the referee calls play back. Asaba was clattered by Preston Goggi with David Lucas, but I think it was a fair challenge. Good chance this for Gillingham to wrap things up, but Asaba couldn't quite get the ball under control and just got a bit of a shoulder charge by David Lucas. He did pretty well. And I can sense they're on the verge of something special here. Can Gillingham hold on? Well, the ball has come up for the amount of time left. It's five minutes, five agonising minutes left for Gillingham to try and hold on to this one-goal lead given to them by Andy Hessenthaler in the very first minute. Could he be the hero, the captain, Andy Hessenthaler? The ball's flicked on by Preston. Again, they can clear. And again, the ball from Preston is overhit. And the relief again. Well, those five minutes of injury time. What must that bench be going through? There's a few smiles there, but I know that manager Tony Pulis will just be hating this. Again, the Gillingham fans rise to their feet. They're willing their side on. Wembley is so close. And every time the ball goes out of play, well, the whole ground just breathes a collective sigh of relief. Macken. Space to turn. Tries to get across him, he can't. He's blocked by Paul Smith and still they work so hard for each other. This may be Preston's last chance to throw something at it. Jason Harris with the throw. Again, the flick on. The ball is broken free. And somehow in the scramble, Nicky Southall has got it free. Sean Gregan fires it back in, but it's wide. And in the midst of all that, a Gillingham player has gone down. Huge scrambles going on there. Well, it was Pennock again who took the bash to the head. He has been through the wars tonight. Well, they're smiling, they sense it, they think they're there. They've got to be so close. And Haley Pennock just rubs his head and says, I'll go on. Doesn't want to miss out now. Gillingham Football Club, been around for 106 years, never been in the top two divisions, never been to Wembley. Well, they're so close now, they can almost touch it. Vince Bartram's kick is long. It goes out of play, and they'll be happy with that. Tony Pulis just urging his players on. One last effort. Hesenthal just boots it clear. And it was a handball. 
and the applause is as loud as you get for a goal being scored. Gillingham have possession, they won't hurry it. A.D. Pennock will take the free kick. Won't mess around with this. Just dinks it wide. And wins the header again. Smith flicks on. But really, the second half, Gillingham have been happy to sit back. They've played to a strict strategy and it has worked every inch of the way up to now. Preston come forward. This must be for the last time. Michael Jackson it is. Space two here. Dinks forward, but it's to no one. And Vince Bartram will kick that over me and out of the ground. Booted forward again by Grieg, and these are tense last minutes. Butters gets his head to it. So does Hodge. But the trouble only partially cleared. Hessenthaler works really hard. What a fine game he's had. The goal scorer. But still, Preston come. Agonising last few minutes. This works his, this works his way clear. Jason Harris tries the shot. And who was there again but Adrian Pennock with the block. Well... It's hard to bear these last seconds as they tick down, but Jason Harris couldn't quite get the space to get his shot in. The final whistle has gone. Gillingham have made it to Wembley for the first time in their history. Priestfield has erupted. The players are on their knees. They cannot believe it. They simply cannot believe it. Mark Saunders clenches his fists. People are running onto the pitch. And in 106 years of football here at Gillingham, they've never seen a night like this. What scenes, what drama. They've won this game by a goal to nil, by two goals to one on aggregate. The goal given to them by their captain, Andy Hessenthaler, in the very first minute. And just look at those players. They've worked so hard for it. So of those fans, and tonight is a very, very special night for them indeed. It's finished, Gillingham 1, Preston 0, 2-1 on aggregate, and Gillingham are going to Wembley. Unbelievable, unbelievable, I can't believe it. Get to my age, you know what I mean, you just dream about things like this, it's magnificent. The lads are absolutely superb, all through the season, it's just, I can't believe it, I just don't know what to say. Absolutely incredible start. What went through your mind? Oh, the early goal, I'm probably too early really because it's still like a long way to go, but to score early, you know, that 2-1, obviously with a away goal as well, just absolutely phenomenal and oh, what an effort, superb, we deserve it, no doubt. Fans have been brilliant tonight, you know, we can't complain, the away fans, they travel all over the country, they're superb and they've come out in the thousands tonight and we're just glad because we've been able to prove and proud and let's hope we get a few at Wembley now and let's go and enjoy it. What was it like in that final 10 minutes in front of you? It was a pretty busy penalty area. Uh, there was an injury and I asked one of the guys behind the goal, how long left? He said 20 minutes. Oh, I nearly died. <laughs> but oh, it, was, it seemed to go on forever. But who cares now we're there? We're, let's enjoy it. It's too emotional for words. I can't describe it. I think the players have been fantastic. They put on a show tonight. They worked, they fought, they battled, they, they ran. You know, against the Preston side, you know, that came here to win it and wanted to win it, obviously. A good Preston side. Um, but we got through and I mean, people were going around pinching themselves, I'm sure, thinking Gillingham Football Club are going to Wembley in the playoffs. There'll be a lot of people looking thinking, how could it be? But it is going to be and uh, we're going to be there in our own right and by merit. There will be a lot of optimism for your team next season, I'm sure. Well, there was none at the start of this season and uh, we like sort of shutting people up at time. And this, this season, I think we have done. Just when it came to the crunch, we, we lacked a final bit, whether it was some extra players, whether it was a bottle. Whether it was just those, that winning feeling, I don't know what it was, but uh, we just missed out at the death. I think we've got what we deserved. I thought we played 
very well at Preston and created the better chances. And even tonight, although they had a lot of sustained pressure, uh, late on in the game, I still thought we created the better openings. It was the perfect start for you? Yeah, very much so. You know, you, you, you're hoping that you get off to a good start and it knocks them on the back foot and you take it on from there. But I knew it was going to be a tight and tense game and, and, you know, we've talked about it, we've worked on things. And it's lovely to see, you know, a, a very long season um, come to a smashing end. Kateering have caused Gillingham to change their ticket policy for the playoff final against Manchester City. The change was made on advice from the Football League, but came too late for some fans who'd already started queuing. Roger Clark reports. The hottest ticket in town. They queued outside Priestfield in their thousands today, making sure they'll be at Wembley for the most important match of the season. But as Tony Pulis set about the task of getting his players ready for the big showdown with Manchester City, in the queue, a new ticket controversy was beginning to rumble. Initially told season ticket holders could buy up to eight tickets for Wembley, the word now was that the allocation had been cut to four. We promised our children, obviously, and grandchildren that we could take them, and finally you can, can only get half the tickets. A lot of people started panicking, I think, because they thought, right, oh, one person had come down and get the time off work and get them for eight people, and then, you know, you've had to ring around and say, quick, get yourself down here, sort of thing, so it's been a bit of a panic. The fans disgruntled, the club quick to explain. This problem was not of their making. We formulated a ticket policy which we thought was sound and it was well conceived um, in consideration with the supporters club, uh, other members of the authorities. Uh, and the Football League called us this morning at half past 11 in somewhat distressed mood uh, and strongly advised us in the very strongest terms to change our policy immediately uh, and to reduce the number of tickets available to the people uh, that we had allocated eight tickets to. The change was made because the Football League feared allowing eight tickets to each person could create a black market and possible segregation problems. But whatever the reason, many fans felt this should have been sorted before tickets went on sale. But with over 30,000 available, it's likely there'll be enough for everyone. Roger Clark in Gillingham for Meridian Tonight. So bring on Wembley. Just on the field, but there's some style about this Gillingham team who think they're a cut above the rest. Everyone's relaxed now, I think we've got the tickets out of the way, we've sorted everything out, we've got the suits, now it's just ready to pack our bags and go. 35,000 fans are hoping Gillingham will measure up on Sunday and there are no doubts in the players' minds. People have been writing stuff from day one, you know, I don't think beginning of the season, no offence to us, we had a, had a tricky start, we didn't win many matches and then I think, you know, there's a few little whispers of relegation. But the lads knew, the lads knew what we were capable of and we put a great run, you know, together halfway through the season. And, you know, the Preston game then, I think there's a few things said that, you know, and even when we, when we beat them, I think it's gone over um, the turn like Manchester and they've all started cheering and singing, so, you know, they must be happy with it, but um, we'll soon see on Sunday. A smart look for the players and the fans are gearing up too as they try to mark the occasion with a buying spree compared to the January sales. We are getting stock in all the time but as soon as it comes in it's being ripped out of our hands before we can put it on the shelves even so yeah, it's been very very busy. There's a real frenzy ahead of this game on Sunday as Gillingham fans try to buy as much memorabilia including these hats and of course these hands. Neil Henderson in Gillingham for Meridian Tonight. The scenes of joy in one half of Manchester. Hopefully there's no repeat of that kind of jubilation when City play at Wembley on Sunday. The Blues are the favourites undoubtedly and they have more to lose than Gillingham. They're a big strong side but um, we, we mustn't demean that, we mustn't underwrite it because, or undersell it because they're good at what they do you know, and, and that's not a, a sideways compliment, it's, it's the honest truth. Supporters have um, have been fantastic, and you know the, the game against Preston down here. That's the best I've ever heard them, and, and that's what we need at Wembley. We don't need them just to go to the game to enjoy the enjoy the occasion. We need them to go there and really get behind the players, and I'm sure they'll do that. It'll be a fantastic atmosphere. Gillingham's first foray forward. Nice touch by Carla Saba, Andy Hessenthaler, and Gillingham have scored. There are players who've strived for a place at Wembley since they launched their careers, but there's no room for sentimentality. I've got my chance to play at Wembley now. You know, it's come a long, it's been, been a long time. I only enjoyed occasion. But, um, you know, I still believe that um, you know that we we we'll win the game on Sunday and get in the in the first division. As the game draws nearer, the fans simply cannot wait for their Wembley away day at the home of football. Paul Scully, Tony Pugh's done a brilliant job. We've all been where we're going up on Sunday. Lots of now biting stuff. I suppose we've got my hair left. It's <laughs> been a nightmare. Oh, it's the biggest game since I've been a fan. They think took down for it for it so <laughs> far. 
there's two days to go before the big Wembley date. They've waited over 100 years for this occasion and attempt to try and reach the first division. Already confidence is high and Gillingham feel they can beat the odds and reach the big league. Neil Henderson in Gillingham for Meridian tonight. The second division final, it's a sellout and there's more than a little excitement in Manchester and Kent. Gillingham sold 34,000 tickets in under two days and they didn't mind waiting. Where have the supporters come from, do you think? Um, what, the Gillingham supporters? Oh, all over the place. I know people from miles that would travel down. Absolutely miles. I mean, you should have seen the queues up there last Friday. It was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, there was a five-hour queue and we couldn't even get in, so they made us go around the corner. And, man, the people there, I mean, everyone was so friendly. There was no rush or anything. Everyone was just getting on with each other and all, all there to support them, so it's really good. How difficult was it getting a ticket? Uh, I found it quite easy. I queued up at the ground nice and early and I managed to get my ticket early so I could go and enjoy the game. Mm. I anticipated the big rush and obviously very pleased to have my ticket whilst others were unfortunate enough not to. Are you going to Wembley? Yes. Do you normally go to the football? No, never been before. It's going to be first time. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So this will be the first football game you've very been to? Very first. Yeah, I've always wanted to go all my life and now I've got my chance. Describe your feelings if they win. I'm not sure I can. Ask me this time next week, I'll be able to tell you. Um, <laughs> unbelief almost. The concept of Gillingham in Division 1 is just you know, beyond my wildest dreams, I think. I've lived in Gillingham for 27 years now. I love the area, I won't ever go out of it. And I think it's going somewhere with the football team. If they can get up there, it, it just puts us on the map a little bit more. What sort of feeling is it going to be for you when the players run out that tunnel? Well, I've, I've, I've no doubt I should be absolutely overcome with emotion. I mean, I've waited 21 years for this, so long I've been supporting the club, but uh, if you'd asked me a few years ago, it was just a dream. But it's no longer a dream now, it's absolutely fantastic. I should enjoy the occasion immensely. How many years will it be before City are doing the treble? <laughs> Could be anything between two and five years. Oh, as quick as that, <laughs> is it? No doubt about it. OK, so presumably that starts by beating Gillingham? Definitely. I don't think they'll have any problem beating Gillingham if they play the football that they're capable of playing. Surely Manchester City just have to turn up on Sunday to win, don't they, against Gillingham? It'd be nice to think so, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course they will. Yeah, definitely. What do you, what do you make of Gillingham? Don't know that much about the team, but I'm sure City will consider it to be a walkover. Walk in the park. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do you want me a prediction? Go on then. 4-1. Up the Blues. Are you a City supporter? I sure am, yeah. Born and bred in Manchester. Well, tell me about it. Is there going to be joint victory on Sunday? There is, certainly, yeah. Yeah, I think we'll win about 3-0. Yeah. 3-0. <laughs> You're not in danger of underestimating Gillingham, are you? Uh, no, no, not at all. No, no. We will beat them 3-0. It'll be a comfortable win. No doubt about it, yeah. Are you going to you? Oh, hey! look, it's <laughs> Ned! It's two Manchester City fans. Kevin Kennedy and Bruce Jones, how are you? How are you, Ned? <laughs> how are you doing? Fine, thanks. You looking forward to it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's exciting stuff. Yeah, confident? Yeah. 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 And more to the point, have you got tickets? Yes. Yes. Well, well I think I have. I don't know at the moment. <laughs> I, hope, I, I have. Hope so. I'll find out I tonight about mine. Let's I have, have a chat. Tell me about City. Right. Well, what do you want to know? It's a big place. <laughs> <laughs> Last season, I mean, relegated from Division 1. I mean, God, how low? It was how... a mad season, though. Well, yeah. Mad. I mean, like, you had managers coming out. It was like a turnstile. One in, one out. I mean, I mean Coppel, I mean, lasted about 20 minutes, I think. I think so. I think half time he went, didn't he? Yeah, so <laughs> it was all crazy. So no one knew what was going on anyway. I heard he didn't like the pies. That's probably what it was. But that was a mad season. I think Joe Rell's come in after what we, the mayhem we had last season, which you, you, you've got to say it was mayhem. And uh, Joe Rell's come in. And to us, we're glad he has. We're yeah. very glad you're there, Joe. And, uh, stabilizing. He yeah, he's, he's stabilizing, and he's sort of got a balanced team, which which yeah. we never had. Like Kevin said, if we went one nil down, you might as well go home. Collapse. Collapse. But now, we'll go one nil down. We know we're going to get back. But you see, you can never never put definite and city in the same sentence. <laughs> it doesn't quite work like that. Tell us about the game, the playoff final. I mean, Gillingham, foregone conclusion. No, 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 That'll suit us more. I think it'll suit the Because like, we've got the Cook. widest pitch, yeah. and uh, Mayno yeah. is probably one of the widest pitches in the, in the league. If yeah. not, I think it is the widest. And that'll suit us down to the ground. 
Um, <laughs> shoot down to the ground. Yeah, so that's very good. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I think it's the playoffs. It's a cup final. You don't really know what's going to happen. Really. I think it's going to go down to who tires first on that day. I yeah. think that's when it'll open up. I think it'll, who's going to tire first? Who, who's going to be? Because no one's going to want to attack and it's concede a goal, really, are they? It's going to be a tight, tight all-round game at first. See how they move with each other. See what happens. But I think tentative. I think tentative. It's tentative. I think. I think it's going to be who tires first. But then again, Manchester City. Yeah, City will probably turn around and hammer him. Yeah. Well, you got, I'll give the other side credit because they've got there. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's true. You've got to do. You can't just say we're going to win it because. There's another team that's got there on, on what they've done. Merit. We'll have to so, wait and see, but that's the beauty of football. That's that's the idea, isn't it? I but mean, we're going to never know. Don't worry about and that. And it's a good day out. It's <laughs> a good day out. It's great. And it's City's day for a change. Yeah. It's our turn. We're even sat at a blue table for crying out loud. Yeah. The gods are with yeah. us. You'll see, Gillingham have graced neither Wembley or either of the top two divisions in their 106-year history. But all that can change on Sunday, and for superstitious reasons, Tony Pullis took his team from Kent to Birmingham, where Chris caught up with them. I took a trip to the Midlands, to Aston Villa's training ground, to see why Tony Pulis had brought his Gillingham team up here to train for a Wembley final. No, it's just that we've been here three or four times and had terrific results away from home. You know, we've beaten Oldham away and we've beaten Burnley away and um, Notts County away. So we've had good results um, and the draw at Preston. So we've had good results when we've used it. So, the, you know, the lads' psychological, it's just a psychological one for the lads really and the facilities, as you've seen, are first class. How important is it to bring him away before such an important game? Well, it's the first time that um, Gillingham have been to Wembley and, and the, you know, the, the hype and the media and everything else in, in Kent is, um, has been amazing. It's really taken off. You know, we've sold out 34,000 allocation within two days. And as you can imagine, everybody wants to speak to the players. So it was, it, it, they needed to get away from that. And they've got to get focused on the game because irrespective of the occasion, and, and it's going to be a fantastic occasion for, for everybody concerned, you know, I'm not going there to lose. You know, I want to go there and, and put a performance in um, that uh, the players will be proud of after, and I've got to get them focused on that. While I struggled to dance around the cones, one man who'd stayed focused against Preston was the Jill's captain, Andy Essenthaler. Ashby into Asaba, lays it off to Essenthaler. Essenthaler, was it a shinner? I slipped over. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did slip over, and uh, I couldn't believe it got in. I think it went through the keeper's hands. I think the keeper probably should have done better on the day, but. Uh, on the night, but uh, yeah, yeah it's a bit fortunate, but uh, we'll take that. What an important goal, though. Yeah, uh, most important goal in my career. Um, you know, it's massive for the club. We've got a chance to play at Wembley for the first time, and um, you know, we're looking forward to it. What's it been like being the captain of these lads? You know, Dillingham, nobody thinks they should be involved in the final of the playoffs. Manchester City are going to there and walk all over you. Mm. What do you think? I think we've got a great chance. So being captain aside, you don't have to do too much because the spirit is absolutely superb. You know, we've got through the squad, you know, the, you know, the the atmosphere and you know, togetherness is uh, phenomenal. And uh, you know, I had five good years at Watford, and uh, you know, some good times there, and the lads were superb. But this mob, unbelievable. Four of those mob had been to Wembley two years ago with Brentford: Paul Smith, Robert Taylor, Carla Saba, and Barry Ashby. Yeah, it was quite a big day. Uh, I just remember being sub and it was uh, a bit disappointing for myself. But I mean, the boys, it was brilliant for them because they deserved it after the whole season of you know, doing so well. What happened, Paul? Was it just a case that crew were too good for you? Um, on the day, I think so, yeah. They were the better side, they deserved to win. You know, you go there to enjoy the day, but once the whistle goes, you've got, you got to you know, be up for it. I think on the day, we just, you know, we didn't perform. That's the, the most disappointing thing about it. Bob, any chances in the game at all? Um, no, not really. They defended very well in that game. Um, we were disappointed with our performance and, uh, you know, to lose one out at Wembley was devastating. But hopefully we can do it this time. Carl, same, similar to yourself. Not many opportunities to score? No, uh, all season I played up front and for that match I played left midfield. Um, all I saw was Danny Murphy's shadow and I have recurring nightmares seeing him <laughs> at number 10 jersey all the time. So yeah. it was a holocaust for myself. Yeah. What is it about the partnership this year with you two? Is it linked from when you played together before? The whole team, they've done extremely well for us and um, it's just lucky Bob and myself have been getting the headlines because we've been finishing everything off. But they're not the only ones to be grabbing the headlines this week. Chairman Paul Scully can't wait for the Wembley trip. Wembley is just something I've dreamed about and I can't even start to imagine what it's going to be like. You know, I almost want to go down to Wembley on my own before Sunday and just walk around and just get the feel for it because it's just uh, I can't take it all on board at the moment. 
The manager has had plenty to take on board this week, namely Manchester City and their boss, Joe Royal. To be honest, I think he's a terrific manager. Um, I think he's done terrific in his career and, and he's dropped down to this level and he's accepted that certain things are different to, to the top level. And uh, you know as well as I do, because we've played at this level, that um, you know, there's a certain way you, you have got to play at times. And Joe's adapted and, and I give him full marks for adapting. His team are stronger and, and a little bit more direct than what they were when we first played them. And they've got the results. And, you know, I, I just think it's going to be a difficult game. You know, everybody expects Man City to win, apart from the people in Kent. Assembly. Uh, but first, let's uh, join Sue Kinnear with some fans who couldn't get tickets for the big game at the Hungry Fox pub in Gillingham. Sue, a uh, nail-biting stuff. It is extraordinary tension here. As you say, we're into extra time after an unbelievable match. Um, basically, the fans here thought they've won three times, but they haven't. Manchester City pulled back an extra time. There's 37,000 fans praying up at Wembley. The fans here can hardly bear to watch. It's a great game. Gillingham, first time at Wembley, but you wouldn't know it. Ian McBride has the match action. Gillingham weren't intimidated by the big occasion and dominated the opening. Butters going close with this second minute free kick. Southall then made a brilliant run down the left, but Asaba couldn't control the ball before the striker turned provider to set up Mick Galloway for Gillingham's best chance. But City started to come into the game. Lee Crook shot just past the post. Then Bartram kept the Jills in the game with a point blank save from Horlock. The Jills fans' hearts missed a beat when Asaba hit home, but the star striker knew he was offside. Two goals in five minutes looked to have changed the face of football history in Kent. Gillingham had shown from the start they weren't intimidated by the big occasion, and it was the Jills' bargain buy of the season, Carl Asaba, who brought Wembley to its feet. He raced into space after Smith's clever through pass and made no mistake. Bob Taylor then looked to have made sure the Jills' first division place was sure with his 21st goal of the season. But first, Horlock gave City some hope as the game went into five minutes of injury time and then, with 50 seconds left, Dickov brought the scores level. Ian McBride for Meridian tonight. That was just a taste of the action. We're still an extra time here. We're 20 minutes in. Unbelievable tension, as I say. But if you want to watch the full match highlights, we've got that in Meridian match just after this programme, directly after this programme, at a quarter to six. But the fans here, very noisy, looking forward to the action and hardly bearing to watch. Let me ask this gentleman here, how are you bearing up? OK, really tense. But uh, they should have got it 2-1, but they'll get it 3-2, so hell. How do you feel about it? Can they do it? It's been a great game. You should win the first match by now, but I still think we should do it. We should do it, definitely. Absolutely. You wouldn't know they've never been to Wembley before. It's Absolutely. been fantastic. 37,000 fans up there at Wembley praying right now, hoping against hope that Gillingham will pull one back. Ruth Hockey, our reporter, went up to Wembley with some of the tens of thousands. Oh, unbelievable. Unbelievable there. Came very, very close, but it wasn't to be. So. Now we're going to join Ruth Hockey, who journeyed up to Wembley this morning with those tens of thousands of fans watching the match live. Whatever the result today was always going to be history in the making for Gillingham Football Club and the Blue and White armies with them every step of the way. It's the Jills' first ever appearance at Wembley in their 106-year history. The first 34,000 tickets were snapped up in just two days, and sales of club merchandise have rocketed. And I'm not predicting defeat at all. They'll get there. They've done this far, they've gone this far, and they will get there. I'm absolutely sure of it, because they are going to get so much cheering and so much support. It's just a pinnacle of the lot. It's everything. It's a day out, it's a season, it's all the years of sporting them and they haven't done anything. It's all been worthwhile. 2-1. 2-1. 2-1. And Andy Hessenthal is going to score. And Hamdi Hesentai is going to score. 40 buses took hundreds of fans to Wembley from Medway. Connex put 10,000 extra seats on train services to the capital. If the mass trip round the notorious North Circular shows dedication, some fans have come from much further afield. One expat's flown in from Australia at a cost of £780, and he's flying back straight after the game. I've been a Gillingham supporter for 32 years. My grandfather took me, my father took me, 
and uh, up until the end of May last year, I was a regular season ticket holder. Um, unfortunately, my job took me abroad to Australia, of all places, and blow me down within a year. They've got, they're at the one place that we all hoped they would be there, and that's Wembley. Man City have always been the bookies' favourite for today's game, but odds of 7-4 to four against a Gillingham win have done nothing to dampen the spirits or the enthusiasm. It's so important. I mean, we've been waiting for so many years for it. It's, it's wonderful. 2-1, 1 0 Gillingham. 5 0 to say. No way. 1 0 Jill. 5 0 to say. So confident. Well, you can't help hoping that those fans are going to be very, very happy on the road home tonight. We're into extra time now, six or seven minutes left to go. Unbelievable. Gillingham just came very, very close yet again. But with a little bit of match analysis now, I'm joined by a former referee who refereed the FA Cup final in 1979. Ron Chalice, you know a little bit about Wembley. What are those guys going through up there today? Well, they're going through a, a, a triple lot of tension and obviously they're quite fatigued, I should think. Very tired out. The atmosphere is, is fantastic. It's, what, 75,000, 78,000 there. And I know what it means to them to pull out everything they possibly can. And they've done their team justice, both sets of players. You were talking about being overawed earlier. It's a, a huge occasion. How do you think they've coped, Gillingham? Well, they've coped very well. I was particularly impressed with Gillingham the first quarter of an hour, 20 minutes. I thought they might be a bit apprehensive because of the occasion, the stadium, the whole atmosphere of the crowd, but they, they didn't. They knuckled down, and the game has been different phases, roughly about a quarter of an hour and 20 minutes of either team being on top for a spell, and it's now like a toss of a coin of who's going to win in this last few minutes even. You thought that they'd won, didn't you, when they went 2-0 up in the, in the 86th minute with that great goal? Well, yes. I mean, you, you've got to think they're going to go 2-0 up. It reminded me immediately of the cup final I refereed with uh, three goals in the last four minutes in that cup final. And it's happened here today. Uh, but Gillingham must have thought they'd won. But uh, the opportunities were there, which Manchester City took. And, um, and now we're here uh, just going to the end of extra time and lots of noise and lots of excitement. Absolutely, they keep coming close even now but do you think Gilliam can do it you know first time at Wembley do you think they've got the legs left well it's very doubt dubious to say whether they've got the legs uh, left or not but the last two or three minutes they've had two chances have been attacking and uh, there's no reason why they can't do it in the last minute of extra time that's what we like to hear thank you very much indeed Ron Chalice now the atmosphere in here is absolutely electric I suspect it's the same in pubs all over Gillingham this is perhaps one of the biggest days in the town's history and John Ryle has been out and about gauging the atmosphere all over Medway's big match day with the supporters' coaches gone, the roads around Priestfield felt like a ghost town, as did much of Gillingham, as did much of the Medway towns. But not everyone could make it to Wembley. Those that couldn't, though, were there in spirit. 2-1 to yeah, the Gills. Right to well, that's how I'd like to see it. 3-0 to the Gills. They're definitely going to win. 1-0, I think. I can't be too optimistic on it like that. Yeah, 1-0. Yeah. Three hours from kick-off, no one wants to go shopping. Even the Jill's local was eerily quiet outside, but inside preparations were well underway. It's like a ghost town. You can actually hear the birds tweet for once. It's a rare occurrence, I think. We're having a barbecue and uh, we'll be celebrating with the Jill's later on this afternoon, hopefully. Around the ground and throughout the town, messages of support for a team a few hours from the most dramatic clash of its 106-year history. It was three years ago that the Jills won promotion to the second division. Exeter and Bury have drawn, so you've been promoted. How do you feel? Hey! How do you feel? Cheers, mate. Congratulations. How do you feel? Ecstatic. I can't put it into words. It's just like a dream, really, to be quite honest. Today, the bookies didn't rate the Jills' chances of making it to the first division, but the fans' faith was unshakable. I think it might be 2-0. Uh, 2-0 two nil. Two nil to Gillingham. 1-0. I think they will get there. Man City, yeah. They've got a good side, Man City. Joe Rawls' team are a good side, but Gillingham, they deserve to win and they will win. They come all the way and they can't stop now. Kick off and 90 heart stopping minutes ahead. But for one young fan who couldn't get to Wembley, the best way to get close to the action was to play at home and dream away. John Ryle in Gillingham for Meridian tonight.
Well, there's just a few minutes left here in extra time. No score yet. Tension unbearable. I just keep wanting to look around and watch the match, but I can't because I'm going to chat to Dave Lee now, who is a Kent entertainer and a life Kent-based entertainer, a lifelong fan of Gillingham. How are you bearing up, Dave? I just can't believe it. We should have won in normal time. There were five minutes of extra time. I think that the referee's using a sundial, not a watch. It's just ridiculous. You know, I've lost 15 stone. I'm down to 34 now. I just can't cope with it. It's ridiculous. How do you think Gillingham have played? Do you think they deserve to win? They've worked so hard. I think the county can be proud of them. I think they're excellent. We, we should and we will win. Fingers crossed. We don't want to go to penalties. We saw earlier that, that uh, Bartram was uh, Vince Bartram was voted man of the match. Who do you think outplayed or played best for Gillingham? I, I think they all 11 deserve it. They've been a credit to Gillingham and the county. They're fantastic. Now, this is their first time at Wembley, the biggest day in their history. Do you think they've coped well with the occasion? Yeah, I don't, don't think they've been at all overawed with the situation. They've coped well, they've matched Manchester City player for player. It's been a very open game, but I, I, I do think we should have won in ordinary time. I can't see where the five minutes came from. Yeah, that referee is going to pay for that for years to come. He certainly is. <laughs> Over your years of supporting Gillingham, have you ever seen a match like this? No, I, I think this is the best Gillingham team that has ever, ever been. And even if the impossible comes and we lose, we can be very proud of them, but we're going to win. Dave Lee, thank you very much indeed. I'm just going to move in here and have a little chat, because uh, how are you holding up in this tension? OK, it's very tense. The boys have done very well. They should have won at 2-1. It went into four minutes. It shouldn't have lasted for that long. But I still think they're going to win, even if it's on penalties. Not much longer to go in extra, in, in extra time. Can they do it? How's it looking? Yeah, they should be able to do it. They've done very well so far. They've played under great pressure. They, they'll do it. They'll win. I'm just going to have a quick word with your friend here who can barely take his eyes off the screen. Sorry, sorry, yeah. Yeah, how have you been holding up with the tension? It's, it's getting very tense. I'm not sure I can cope with this much longer, but uh, I think it's going to go to penalties. Absolutely. Um, That's the way it's it looking doesn't. here. Let's hope it doesn't. Let's hope Gillingham pull one off. We'll have more for you later in this programme. Sue, what's the feeling now with uh, penalties in full swing? Well, very sad, actually. All the cheers have just suddenly turned to tears. Gillingham haven't done it on penalties. 3-1, Man City are going up. Gillingham have put up such an incredibly brave fight. They gave us the match. Oh, it's not quite over yet. I've just been uh, informed it's not quite over yet. But it is now. It is now. That, uh, that miss from uh, Gillingham there, ensuring that they will not be going up to Division 1. And many people here in this pub will feel that they deserve to because they fought so hard. And at one point it looked like they could have won by 2-0, but unfortunately they didn't. Let's just uh, get a little bit of immediate reaction here from uh, some of the people watching. Gutting, isn't it? Um, I don't know what to say. Speechless. Um, they deserved to do it, didn't they? They did. They played a very good game. Um, that's all I can say about it. Absolutely. Moving along here to your friend, you can't take the eyes off the screen, what's going through your mind right now? It's got to be Manchester's week, isn't it? Right, last minute of the game, they scored the two goals to equalise. Can't believe it. I think Gillingham deserved the win, though. It's devastating. First time at Wembley, you wouldn't know they'd never been there before, would you? They, they played blinding. They were like, full of determination. They should finally deserve the win, really. They dominated the game. Absolutely. Well, our sympathies with you. We were uh, Meridian here, we were rooting for them. And unfortunately, we won't now be returning to Wembley because the match is just over. All our resources tied up there for the Meridian match where you can watch the whole game immediately after this programme. One last word here from uh, Dave Lee. You must be feeling like the world's ended. Sick as a pig. Well done, lads. Anyway, we're very proud of you. And there's always next year. Absolutely, Ron Charles. Can they do it again next season? I think they can do it again. They've probably learned a lot from today. And, and you know, we're two nil up. Everybody thought they'd won. Um, it's cruel, cruel game. As somebody just commented on, on the commentary, so near and yet so far. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the afternoon. And full credit to the club and all the players. Okay. Well, thank you both very much.